been your, uh, your first impression, I guess, kind of, not first impressions, but your impression so far in the quarterback room, working with them throughout OTAs and, and training camp? Oh, it's a great group. These guys work hard, um, ask a lot of questions. They put the time in. What I'm excited is they're putting the time in away from me, and that's showing up every day they come into work. And with, with Derek Carr specific, specifically, you know, you haven't worked with him in the past, but what if, you know, kind of what was your perception of him before you started working with him, and how has that evolved since you? Oh, like I said before, I've always thought he's a great player. He's a competitor. Uh, he's won a lot of football games. Uh, he's played a lot of good football, and I'm ex just excited to coach him and get him better every day. You see those kind of incremental jumps in him as well, because it's a new new, new scheme and new offense. He, as each day goes by, you see. Yeah, he incremental. as like I said with the rest of them, he's putting in a lot of time away from work, and he has a lot of football. He has a big library, and he's improving. And like I said, he's asking great questions, and we're moving forward each day. Like I said, I'm really excited about them all. What's been the biggest surprise for you in training camp so far? The biggest surprise? Uh, nothing. I mean, it's just I really like our group, our quarterbacks. Uh, they've been, like I said, they've been working really hard, and we're putting in, putting in the offense, and it's kind of a be where your feet are, everyday mentality, just getting better. How important is having the competition right behind Derek with uh, Mullins and Stidham fighting for that number two spot push? Yeah, I mean, it's just everybody's competing. Um, you know, it's a, it's a great room, and I think they're doing good and, you know, taking advantage of their opportunities. And I'm excited for the, you know, the preseason. What do you want to see from, from those guys in particular? You know, obviously you don't expect much from Derek on Thursday, but uh, from, from the other guys in the room, what do you want to see from them in the game? Just execution, you know, and just going out, having fun, and sticking to our rules and just, you know, going out and playing. I'm really excited to go see those guys compete and play football. First on Thursday. We haven't discussed it. We'll discuss it as we get closer to game time. But like I said, it's day to day. We're just going out, competing, and you know, working each day on our install, trying to get a little bit better. Chase is out there too. Chase Barber's rookie. What have you seen from him starting his career in the NFL? Yeah, Chase has been great uh, since rookie minicamp. He's come in, he's worked, he put the extra time in in the summer. It really paid off when he showed back up for training camp because we moved quick in training camp and he's. He's kept up, and I'm just continuing to push him, and he's he's responding well. Is it a little too early to see him on Thursday, or can we expect to see him out there some snaps? Yeah, like I said, we'll talk about that as we get a little bit closer as a staff to the game time. So how important is, I mean, it's obvious that it's important, but just how important is the play of the offensive line when it comes to the install and the quarterbacks having the time to actually go through their progressions and things like that? It's great, but I mean, we have a timing. We execute within the timing of the play. I always tell them to be, be aggressive within the timing of the play, and they understand that. And you know, uh, we have a clock in our head, and that's a, they got a great. We got a great offensive line room, and I'm really excited to see all those guys go out and compete. Anything else? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. How has this process gone for you? Uh, just learning this new offense, you've been at it now for a week and a half, obviously going back to OTAs and whatnot, but uh, getting on yep. the field and, and doing it day, day after day. That's the best part is just getting on the field and um, and then ironing it out, you know, like, hey, you can get through that one quicker, or hey, you can throw it like this. or And uh, and obviously I got great film to watch and Tom, you know, running the offense, right? And uh, and so it's been, it's been cool for me uh, to see, you know, see him doing it, watch his eyes, you know, things that he was doing to manipulate and try and, Try not just be new at it, but try and take it that next step, you know. And uh, so it's been fun. And uh, we're, again, it's a process. I'm learning a new one. Uh, but it's been, it's fun for me because I enjoy the mental side, as you know. Uh, enjoy the mental side of the game. So learning from Josh, uh, Mick, and, you know, Bo and how they, how they see it. And, you know, the diff it could be the same play I've run before, but how, what's their philosophy? It could be different. And so uh, it's been, but it's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. We talked to Josh uh, the other day about learning how not to lose games. Yes. And is that is as important or maybe goes hand in hand with winning games. Uh, yeah. Do you feel like there's been more of an emphasis, uh, not to talk about anybody else that's yeah. been here before, but more of an emphasis on that side of things? Well, well, I can talk about Josh, and I know Josh has emphasized the heck out of that, you know, how, uh, you know, fumbled snaps, picks, fumbles, uh, penalties, offense, defense, special teams, um, how, how, uh, how fundamentals uh, come into play um, on those things and how we drill those things. And, you know, the fundamentals of things is something that we work 
um, really hard at, something that we do a lot of uh, here in, uh, in this, I guess, system, you know, in all three phases. And uh, hopefully that'll result into what he's saying, that happening for us. Do you think it has a chance to, because, you know, in history, uh, the most penalized team in the league yeah. has been, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. Do you think that that could be mitigated out of there or governed out, out of there? I sure hope so. Um, you know, there's been times where I'm like, dude, no way, <laughs> you know. And, uh, and, and, and hopefully one of the things is like, hey, if, they're, if that's the case, then we need to work ten times harder at it. And so we, it's really been emphasized on – fundamentals, making sure we can, the penalties that we can eliminate, um, especially the mental ones, the pre-snap ones, all those kind of things. Uh, it's really been a huge emphasis with, with Josh and our, and our coaches. It'll probably be a discussion between you and him, but one extra game, do you have a preference what you do on Thursday, how much you play a different play, amount of playing time during this preseason the last ones, or is it just him? I, I'm not going to lie to you. We, we haven't even talked about it. So I, do you have a preference? Do I, oh, do I have a preference? Oh, no, I don't care. Um, I, I think with the way that I've always tried to practice. I don't treat it any different from the from the speed of how I want to play. Um, and I push our receivers and the coaches do too to make it as real as possible. So that, you know, if we play preseason awesome, if we don't, we're still ready, you know, um, and, and from the speed of things. And when you got, you know, Max and Chandler and those guys and how hard they practice, you get a, you get a, a simulation of a real rush and things like that. So I, we haven't talked about it, but we try and make practice as if, hey, we don't we don't know if we are or, you know, those kind of things. So. Preference-wise, we do so much. I, I don't really have a preference. If we play, awesome. You know, anytime you get a chance, to put an NFL uniform on and play, you're excited. But uh, again, for me, it it don't matter. You know, I've played in them. I haven't played in them. Either way, we'll be ready. Now that you've seen a couple of uh, added practices, um, it's not everything so far. But what do you thought of the offensive line to, to this point? Yeah, I think that Carm and Cam are doing a great job of pushing the physicality with them. I think that um, they're really. You know, I, I hate using that term all the time, but it really is what they're doing. They're, they're really working hard in their individual because uh, when they get to us, I mean, they're grinding, you know, and they're taking what they learn in the individual and the one-on-ones and boom, in the group and doing it in team. And I think that they're doing, they're doing some really good things. And you got to give credit to the, to the players for their, for their effort, but to our coaches because they've really, I, I'd say, not, it's not an emphasis, it's their job, but like they've really been, you know, not hard on them, but they're, they're demanding and they're going after it and they're working and our players are receiving it. And so it's been, it's been good. So um, it doesn't guarantee anything, but, you know, I have seen them, you know, getting after it and doing some really nice things. They're dovetailing with that, um, the offensive line in particular, with Denzel Good's retirement. Yeah. What have you seen out of Lester Cotton? Yeah, I'm so, you know, Paul, I'm so proud of Lester. Yeah, he, how I say when he first came in, one of the first questions he asked me, he says, you know, this was in um, in Alameda. He says, "What do I need to be? What do I need to do to be your starting guard?" That's what he asked me, you know. And I was like, "This is what a question, you know." And I said, "Man, just keep 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 working your butt off, you know." Uh, at the time, you could look back and see who we had there and things like that. It was going to be hard for him. Um, but I, I told Lester when we were walking to our car the other day, I said, "Lester, I'm so proud of you." Because through the cuts, through the re-signs, through the this, through the that, all this kind of new schemes, all, you have done nothing but put your head down. You've been in there with AJ, AJ Nibel. You've worked your butt off, and now you're getting reps and all these kind of things. And and I said, you look, you look good, man. You're doing, you're doing some good things. And so, um, I don't know, you know, where he's at with everything. Like as Carm would know, or we can't, or Josh would know. Um, but I can tell you just, just how proud of him I am. You know, hopefully that show like says you know what I'm trying to say, what I see about him. You know how how much he's come from from when I first saw him. Last year we uh, we talked before the Thanksgiving game, and, and you sort of recollected a time of when you and your brother would play oh, yeah. Thanksgiving mornings, and then go in and watch it, and then what it meant to you. And I was looking at some of your milestone games, right? Like your hundredth game, your first game here in Vegas, your the first Thanksgiving game. To go back to the preseason question, have you sort of had a chance to think about what it would be like to, even if you took one snap at the Hall of Fame game, this this would be your first trip there to Ken. I mean, as a you know, as a as a player uh, on this weekend. Yeah, um, you know, we got to go. Was it the symposium they used to do in Ohio? Like when I guess I'm that old now, but like we used to go. Like we went to the Hall of Fame, you know, and so we did those things. So like. To me, like to be able to play in that game, obviously, would be awesome. You know, uh, especially against a good football team. Uh, you know, good, you know, good front, good, good cover guys, good linebackers. It'd be fun to see it. You know, and all that kind of stuff. But um, at the end of the day, 
like we're in training camp. So like my mind is like, you know, what do I have to do this afternoon? You know what I mean? Like I got a lot, I got a lot in the meetings. I got a lot in the walkthrough that is already going through my head. And so uh, I, I, I haven't even, if I'm honest, I haven't thought about it, you know, what that would be like. Um, but I'm assuming, you know, the more that I think about it, it would be <coughs> absolutely it'd be cool. You know, I think that was, I think it was Josh's like high school too, wasn't it? Like his stadium. So I, I know that's cool for him, you know, to go back. So. Here from a quarterback um, position, with all the weapons that you have in the receiving core, do you visualize now maybe going more deeper passes down the field with all the new toys you have? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I, I got to be honest. I thought we, the last couple of years, we've done that. Um, you know, in this system, I don't know. You know, I haven't played, you know, games in this system yet. You know, seeing that flow of how how he calls him, where he wants the ball to go, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you'd have to, you know, go look back to his past, you know. I know I'm willing, you know. Uh, I, know we're a- I know we're able, um, you know, we'll see. Um, but right now we're just working a lot of speed option, triple option type things right now. So we'll see. Derek, uh, when, you guys go, when you guys go 11 on 11, 7 on 7, it's getting pretty competitive with guys like Brock Yassine and Anthony yes. Hubbard and Nate Hobbs and um, Trayvon. Uh, what do you see from, from, from that group over there? Like you said, I think y'all all see it too. They're really competitive. Like, you know, they're making plays on some really good players, and it's not just routes on air. You know, when they're playing man coverage, they're it's sticky. You know, they're they're doing some good things. And again, that that's a credit to the coaches, the scheme, the the players buying in um, to how they want to do things. You know, hey, using our fundamentals, not your own. You know, that kind of thing. You know, everyone has been in different schemes. Everyone's been, in it, but how do we do it our way? You know, and I think everyone's buying in. And I think when when, when everyone buys in and does it right, it's the proof is on the film, you know, that, hey, when you do it right, this is what it should look like. And so they're, they're super competitive. They're, they're, they're challenging me to make really tight throws, um, some, some tighter throws than some games, you know. They're, they're really doing a good job of, of covering and uh, proud of those guys. And, uh, you know, sometimes obviously with the talent that we have, you know, they, they get beat here and there on certain things. But, you know, that's not a knock. It's definitely not a knock on them, you know. But um, I've been really – been really impressed with all our secondary and the covering skills that they've had, and um, I'm excited to watch them work. You know, they're, again, it's a process, but they're they're doing some really good things. There are a lot of takeaways on the new receivers. You got uh, Collins, uh, Robinson, and Cole. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, you said Robbins. Robinson, Keelan, Keelan, Cole. Cole, yep. Uh, so you know, Keelan has really impressed me uh, with um, you know his ability to turn in the, in the air to make catches. His ability on the sideline, he's really good. Um, you know, that's never a doubt if he's in or out. Like he just, some guys have a natural feel of where they're at on the field. He runs some really crisp routes. Uh, Robinson has done, you know, he's flashed that talent, you know, that speed that we've seen, you know, happen against us, you know, uh, for, for a few years. And, um, you know, he's flashed those same things here, that ability uh, to be, you know, someone that can stretch the field and also run the intermediate to short stuff and, you know, make something happen afterwards. And, uh, yeah, Mac, he's someone that he does everything. You know, he's a big body. Uh, obviously, he's he's made a great career and you know, you know playing some special teams things and being able to play all the positions at receiver. And I think I try and tell guys all the time too. And, and Mac is like an indication of that. Like, try and learn it all. You know, if you can jump in at this spot or you can jump in here, I mean, it just helps your ability to play for a long time. And Mac uh, reminds me of that. You know, he he just he learns it all and he he's a he's one of the first guys. I've seen where you know, you know, maybe he's not the number one target right now, or things like that. But people gravitate towards him because of his work ethic. You know, they want to sit around him, they want to be around him. He's a, obviously, you guys know he's a funny, he's a cool guy. You know, guys want to be around him, but uh, it's all football. You know, and uh, his his ability to tell the young guys, like, man, this is how I did it. Like, come on, you know, if you're not one of the top guys, you you got to play special teams. What are you doing? Let's go. You know, and his ability to push guys in that direction has been impressive. Um, you know, to to get that out of guys because um, you know how. Eh, if I played receiver and I was the number one guy in my college, when you come here, you're like, dang, you know, I got to run down on a kickoff, <laughs> you know, all that kind of stuff. But Mac does a good job of, you know, make, you know, helping uh, guys understand what it's like to be a pro. In your opinion, is it the deepest wide receiver room that you've ever had in your career? I don't know. Um, we'll see. You know, uh, on paper, it looks great and it's exciting. I, I, I get that. Um, you know, I was excited, you know, for everyone that we have added, but we'll, we got to prove that. You know, um, it's it's an exciting time from when we go out to practice that you can roll guys in and they can all play at a high level. Um, but practice and games are two different things. And so um, I'm co- cautiously optimistic. You know, uh, you know, I, I'm always optimistic, but I'm just trying, you know, in my 
the last few years, just kind of just stay like this and, you know, just, you know, keep enjoying the process, um, you know, keep enjoying getting better with each receiver and uh, see where see where that takes us. Uh, two things. One, uh, AJ Cole not thrilled with your haircut. I know. <laughs> that was a funny quote, by the way. Um, but also, uh, on a serious, I know you can prepare for your season, your focus on you guys, but like the whole NFL world was talking about the Kyler Murray situation, his contract. Yeah. What was going on? I wonder if, if you had thoughts on it. Is that something like quarterbacks kind of share, like a, a group text, something like that, of everybody kind of talking about a, a thing like that that happens? Uh, it depends, like, what quarterbacks you know. Um, I didn't talk to anybody about it. Uh, I know a lot of quarterbacks in my nine years. I've gotten to know a lot of them, and we we didn't say anything about it. You know, um, you know, I don't know his situation. I don't know their G, you know GM like that. Um, I don't I don't know Kyler that close. I've talked to him a couple times. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, I mean, you know, I, I just hope for him that you know, just want to eliminate the distractions and go play football. You know, that's just in my mind. You know, as a as a young player that he is, and he's super talented, super successful. Uh, you just eliminate those distractions. Don't even worry about it, man. Just keep playing. Be a good teammate, and you know, lead your team. You know, uh, it's hard standing up here asking questions, answering questions. You know, we've been through some things in these years. You know, it's hard getting up here all the time and having to answer certain things about the business side or this or that. Um, and hopefully, he can just you know kind of put that aside and answer them, and you know, move on and just play football. So I wish that for him. I didn't talk to anybody about it. Um, you know, but my thoughts on it are just, man, just go play football. You know, I, I hope that he's. I hope he's doing great. Could you grow the hair back out, or what? nah, nah. Like AJ, AJ asked me every day. He's like, you know, hair is supposed to go the other way. Yours just keeps getting shorter. And I was like, AJ, I think that that ship has sailed. <laughs> yeah. So, Derek, let me ask you just, you know, just for yeah. you personally. Yeah. When you watch game film from in a seven-day period, how many hours do you? Put <laughs> I knew that question. <laughs> <laughs> You know, my wife was counting the other day. She was like, "You know, you, I'm not, I'm not gonna get into that. I don't even want to look." I, again, I hope Kyler's doing great. Myself, I watch a lot of film. Yeah, I'm leaving it at that. I was, leave it at that. All right, guys, Good. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. <laughs>
and um, everything going good. How has, your, how has your confidence been the last couple of years through this whole process? Your ups and downs, and where you are now. Is your confidence? Uh, you ever you take some hits last year, or you do all the same kind of you know, you kill? Yeah, um, I basically just try not to get too high, too low. You know what I mean? Just um, just stay grounded. You know what I mean? But um, it's going well. I mean, I'm human, so we all got our like ups and downs, stuff like that. But overall, I feel good. Denzel Good announced his retirement. You weren't able to play much with him due to the injury, but what are your thoughts on him taking this time off the field now? Um, great teammate, great dude. Um, he taught me a lot, you know what I mean? Just being um, at guard and also a tackle. Um, just a great dude, a great leader, and a great um, mentor. So um, good luck with him and his journey, and uh, I'll definitely miss him. That's all set. Anything else? Great. Thank Roll you. Time. Roll Tide. Side five. How does this training camp kind of feel compared to last year when everything was so new and then now you've got a year kind of behind you? Uh, it's kind of the same feeling, honestly. Like, I feel like you get a, we got a new staff, you got new things to learn, you got to prove yourself again, which is, I think, what I live for and all my teammates live for. We got a pretty headstrong team. What do you think got the upper hand so far through training camp, the receivers? Or? <laughs> you going to have to watch the film for that one. I'm going to let you be the judge. <laughs> I noticed you guys running a, a lot of cover two today in practice and some inverse from the nickel position. You guys see you guys playing more man or more zone this year? Um, I'm playing whatever the coach call. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> whatever position I got to be in doing that, that's what I'm going to do. So. Last year you came in drafted in the fifth round. You yeah. earned your spot in the preseason game showing off what you can do. Is there any difference now coming into year two in your career? Um. Not really, because I feel like this football, especially in the NFL, so what have you done for me lately, world? So it's not about what I did last year. It's not about what anybody on the team did last year. Um, we got to show it and bring to the table what we can bring every day, just be the best version of ourselves. Do you want to play in the preseason games, or is that something that? Whenever I get a chance to play football, I'm going to play football. So if they tell me I'm playing, then I'm playing. Are there certain ways where going against Derek in practice the last couple of years has helped you in your game and come up to improve? Uh, of course. I feel like Derek, he's he's a top tier quarterback. It's just a, a blessing, really a blessing and an honor to be able to go against somebody uh, who's that competitive and that precise with his decision making and, and his accuracy to just be able to see that and, and compete against that and make me better. So big kudos to Derek. That's my guy. How much of an advantage was playing in the slot last year? Now, you know, moving into the boundary and learning both spots. Obviously, different techniques cause for different things and aspects, but the spacing of it and leveraging your spacing and using the sideline as an extra defender, how well have you adjusted playing outside as opposed to inside? Um, really, all my high school career and most of my high school career and, and college career, I play outside, so that's second nature to me. That's, you know what I'm saying, that's something I feel like I can do at a high level. But um, playing in the slot, like you said, it's a lot more room, so it makes, you know, playing corner, slot, whatever I got to play, safety, if I got to do that, it makes it a lot um, easier, I feel like, just having a feel for multiple positions. Thank you. What are some things about Rock and Scene's game that have uh, jumped out to you thus far working with them? I think Rock is very underrated. I think Rock is um, one of the most competitive guys I ever met. He's, his his routine is, I feel like, unmatched. I ain't seen a routine like that. He continues to be the same person every day. He puts it in, and he puts, he puts the work in on the field and off the field. He pushes me to be a better player and a better teammate. I love him for that. Hey, how different is that cornerback room this year as opposed to last year? Um, I feel like... We got, I, I honestly feel like last year we was super competitive and it, it feels the same to me. It feels different guys, of course, you know what I'm saying? Different characters, different different people. But I think that's the beauty of it, you know what I'm saying? Getting to make relationships with just different people and, and, and being in their life and, and their path. And uh, I feel like we make each other better every day. So I love it. 
I know you said there's not that much difference, you know, how you feel this year compared to last year, but is, is there any sense of last year you believed you could play at a high level and now you know that you can play at a high level? Yeah. Um, <laughs> like, like you said, I felt like last year, I felt like I believed it, so I did. And I feel like it's no different this year. I believe it. I feel like believing is knowing. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's why I, that's why I stand on, uh, I walk by faith. So I got faith in myself and faith in God. You know, Tim Moore, Levi and Lloyd, you personally, even though you talk about the competitiveness, <coughs> what do you believe is your favorite part about this quarterback secondary room? My favorite part about the room of playing, playing corner. I feel like it's all love in that room. And everybody has a high motor. Everybody wants everybody to win in there. And we all got a work ethic. I feel like um, that, for, as far as my perspective, I haven't seen like that's unmatched. Like everybody in there wants to put in extra work. Everybody in there, who, whoever can get a snap is going to hop up. So I just feel like that's working in our favor. Awesome. Nate, I remember talking to your high school coach and he had said that he was shocked that no one in the state of Kentucky had recruited you and there was a point in time that no one knew your name and he was you know, surprised. Um, and, and, but you always showed up for big, big moments. I always played with the chip on your shoulder. Do you still carry that, that chip of sort of being someone who really wasn't known until you made those big plays and evolved from high school to college to your rookie year? Um, till I die. Real talk, till I die, where I'm from, I'm from Louisville, Kentucky, so I never I never got the chance to see anybody make it, you know what I'm saying, that that far to the NFL, like when my own two eyes personally knew somebody. So I feel like that's, that's and it's like that, in all areas, I feel like of Louisville, like we are, we a real underrated city. I feel like so. Um, growing up there, it made me like that. I guess I was a creature of my habitat. You know what I'm saying? So. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Nate. Appreciate. You.